Okay, so now we have to decide what we're going to do with this end. We can replicate what the factory's done, uh, which is just a basic narrowing for better clearance on the end, or we can start to get creative and make some that are perhaps project specific or work holding specific. Now the simplest way to do this would be to place it in the chuck as low down as we can. And we're gonna do that for our first example. So I just used a protractor to mark a 30 degree angle on the face of the piece. And I've roughly aligned that with the top of the jaws. And right now I'm taking 25 thousandths passes at this. And whether you go front to back or left to right is up to you. I just thought it would show a little better on the camera here. So another method of making the same cuts is rather than going down, we set what we want our eventual depth of cut to be, and then we make cuts across the face with the long edge of the mill. In this pass, I'm taking uh, 50 thousandths off. So you do get some different surface finishes. And these were pretty heavy and rough cuts. I mean, we weren't doing anything fine, but uh, that give you, gives you a couple of ideas. We didn't have it clamped super well either. Having it supported would have been better. But that gives us that angle. Now, if we wanted to, we could clamp it in and, and do that angle as well but I'm gonna to switch to uh, using an angle plate rather than just kind of propping it up in there. And we'll do that after a couple of other cuts here. So here I'm gonna do some plunge cuts with the end mill. And the idea behind a plunge cut is we're mainly taking cuts with the bottom edge of the cutter this is often one of the fastest ways of, of doing cuts. Now without a, a rapid acting ram, and instead, of turn, and instead we're turning the hand wheels, it's a little bit slower on the sure line. But once you get into CNC, this will definitely be, this will definitely be a consideration for when you want to hog out material at a rapid pace. Now I'm just taking uh, 50 thousandths at a time. This one I'm gonna just do 25 thousandths. So the angle plate is an accessory we haven't used yet, but it will make the cutting of these angles and chamfers a lot more consistent and easier than just kind of the rough tilt that we showed before in the vise. So I'm just gonna secure it down to the table with four screws. And I just used uh, a square on there to get it roughly lined up with where we want it to be. Now this comes with a little chuck adapter in case you want to mount your three jaw or four jaw chuck. You can also mount the rotary table on here. Um, what we're going to end up doing is mounting our vise. So the vise will mount like so. We can also mount it in this direction if we wish, and there are holes pre-drilled in the base for both of these. And we're going to give it a rough squaring. Now there are screws on either side that will allow us to raise and tilt the table as so. On the other side, there is a scale, although for a lot of things you're probably going to want to use an external protractor or angle blocks. So this is an example of an angle block. Uh, this happens to be a 20 degree block and we can use it to set a fairly precise angle. You can also use sign bars and uh, angle plates and there are a lot of other ways to do this. 
So fixed angle plates, I should say, rather than this being an adjustable angle plate. So that 20 degrees that I set is fairly arbitrary. So whatever you need for the particular clamping function that you're trying to perform. Now this can become a little bit of a juggling act when you're trying to hold the piece in there and the parallels in there, tighten the jaw down and tap it with a hammer. So some of these things you may want to do flat before you, before you put the angle up. And then we'll also look at some stops and other things that will do some modifications to the vise to make our lives a little bit easier in this regard. But now we can repeatedly cut this 20 degree angle very securely in the vise uh, quite easily. And with the use of angle blocks, we can really set any angle to a one degree increment fairly easily. Now I had marked some 45 degree lines on this piece earlier, uh, just playing around. Obviously, we're not using those 45 degree lines. So since we do have a couple of fixtures and we're kind of extended far off the table, we might want to do some lighter cuts here just to keep the vibrations to a minimum. So right now I'm taking uh, 25 thousandths. So instead of going front to back, we can go left to right. Uh, just practice, see what gets you the finish you want and, and gets you the, the results that you want. In this case, I'm just doing a five thousandths cut just to finish this surface off. This is another example of where having a bandsaw, you could help rough out uh, this piece so that you don't have to shave off as much. And you should be careful when you're when you're doing this to make sure that it that you get this table level front to back because it's fairly easy to torque it a little bit, um, which I have done here. So I'm getting a little bit of a step when I mill um, side to side. So when making these, you can set this angle to whatever you want. You can do an angle here and then a steeper angle across the front if you so wished. Uh, depending on what you want, you can just go off of one side or take it off from both sides. Maybe you're doing something where you want more clamping surface over here, but you want to sneak up on um, a hole or something that you need to drill in here. It's also where you can do uh, things with a notch in the middle, for example, to get that same effect where you're holding a very small work piece, perhaps with one clamp, and you're working on it between uh, the front jaws of the clamp. This is one that I was just uh, freehanding a little bit earlier, or I shouldn't say I wasn't freehanding it, I had it clamped, but um, I was just turning both wheels to see if I could get um, any sort of a, an OG and how closely I could follow compound lines and things like that. Just a, a practice if you want to get more artistic, um, and as you can see I still need a lot of practice. Uh, keep a, spare, a couple of spare blanks on hand if you want to um, for, for projects that may come up that need something special as far as clamping and holding goes. So I've got a lot of chips to clean up, but I thought I'd show you some of the variations that I created here. They still need some uh, filing and deburring and cleanup on a few of them. These are just a couple of ideas that I had as I was making these. Um, it's a good idea to keep some blank so that if you have a special work holding need that comes up, you'll be able to do that. So this one I just used an, an end mill on to put a circle on the end or a groove if you will on the end. You could use a, a ball mill as well to hold small parts as one example. This one I took down more on one edge than the other, and I didn't do anything on the face, so I could use this either left or right to get up close to something, but still provide a lot of clamping surface over here. I thought it looked a little bit like a fish, so I had a little mouth in it because I was bored. 
And then this one, I just kind of freehanded the side a little bit and tried to do some decorative cuts there. Uh, but it's got a narrow nose, again, for getting into maybe a tighter spot. This is closest to the factory, but I cut some steps in it. And those steps would allow us to get uh, chuck or call it up closer uh, to the workpiece. So we've got a little more clearance there. A lot of different ways we could do that. And then on this one, I've got a V-notch that I cut. But then I've also cut V-notches along either face. So this would allow us to hold a small round piece and clamp it, say, down to the table like that or down to another work surface um, and be able to do, you know, put a notch in it or drill a cross hole in it, things along those lines. And I put one larger notch and one very, very small notch on the other side. So just use your imagination. You know, this is a fairly simple part to make. Um, it is something that you'll probably end up needing quite a few of, depending on what, uh, what type of work you're going to be doing. And you will, again, probably be making some customized ones. So I hope you enjoy this video. As always, give it a thumbs up if you've liked this series. Leave anything in the comments if you want to see something else or, or have suggestions for future projects. And be sure to subscribe to continue getting updated video announcements.